Commanders, my name is Beck, and today we are going to be talking all about First Contact Day because that's what today is. But before we get into that, we have a couple of very special guests that I would love to introduce to you. We have Julie and Shauna Benson. Hello. Hello. The Benson sisters. That's um, us. That is you. Um, Y'all are sisters. We are. <laughs> Last we checked. Last you checked. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys have done a lot of writing, like around television, comic books, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um, and I, I'm sure people are wondering, what does that have to do with Star Trek and whatnot? So I would love for you guys to take a moment, talk about, you know, um, you as sisters as a writing pair, mm -hmm. your, your entrance into Star Trek universe involvement all those things well we haven't killed each other yet so that's a plus <laughs> there, there's the first thing and uh yeah we've been writing with each other for oh gosh math years 15 years yeah at least. 15 years but really it, it goes back to childhood we think we started writing together when we were playing barbies uh when i would make shauna be ken and i'd have to be barbie and we'd have to do all of the things and how and then we'd put the barbies down and pick back up so I mean, you know yeah you'd leave on a cliffhanger and so when you come back oh, naturally you had, yeah, yeah yeah so and i typically i got notes yeah um, shauna would get a lot of notes so um, really our so process changed. hasn't changed yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, great. it's pretty good and uh how do we start watching uh star trek uh uh, we we learned basically because we call our parents to say, "Hey, you guys have any good memory of us watching Star Trek?" We're like, no, we just always watched it. Yeah, and so it's sort of like we were steeped and born in Star Trek without really knowing anything else but Star Trek. And and the one thing that was noted was that I was taken at a very young age, very young, uh, to see Star Trek the motion picture uh, when it came out. I was apparently a very well-behaved child as a youth. So, I mean, if someone took me was, at my age, oh, yeah, I know, I'm regressing. Uh, if someone had taken me at my age uh, then to, like, now to a movie theater, I would probably, like, raise a lot of of issues, like, with the theater owner of, like, how dare you allow those people to bring this young child into this movie oh, that I sure. want to enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But apparently it was okay for me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, the, the memory is that it was always on and that it was just because the repeats were constant. And when uh, Star Trek The Next Generation got announced, we uh, were very excited, or at least I was. And I... I was probably excited because you were excited. I know. And uh, <laughs> I, I think I didn't actually watch the... I watched the first episode, but I missed a few in the first season, I, if, at least in terms of my very fastidious uh, tape recording of every single episode. Yeah, see, back there used to be these things called VCRs, and it would be like a, a <laughs> tape, and you'd stick the tape in the VCR, and you'd hit record, and you'd record your favorite show, and then on the side, Sean would write the episode number and the, the here's title the thing. of the episode. I wasn't recording because I wasn't going to be home. I was recording them and sitting there and editing out commercials. I was yes. pausing every single commercial break. Yeah. So that on my rewatch space. of episodes, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have to sit through the commercials. Get about three or four episodes on a tape, and then she'd have them all lined up yeah. in our uh, basement. And so we could they just... were all you very put a little, labeled the out. little piece of uh, like masking tape on top, right with Sharpie, like what it oh, was. Yeah, I can actually that show thing, you the, so you can't the record list over it. that I created for myself of every single episode title and what tape it's on. And it was all that's out, incredible. It was all numerical. So yeah. holy cow, super nerd. Was, so oh, she yeah. was like a super oh, yeah. nerd. I wasn't. I had, I had, I had a doctor. <laughs> I watched it too. I had Doctor Crusher on my wall. I actually had a lot of them because I would get the Star Trek magazine and I put a lot of them on my oh, wall. Oh yeah, and I read. You the had Star a lot Trek. of Crusher and uh, Wesley Crusher Shh. on your wall. Talk about the Wesley Crusher. <laughs> We're not talking about that. Posters uh, of Wesley. Sh sh I didn't even know they. I was made the right those. age. Okay, I was the right age. Well, that's, that's poster like probably a centerfold out of it was. Star it was Trek like magazine. a triple fold that you. I like, remember those. Flatten out. And not of not of Wesley Crusher, yeah, sure, but, but I yeah. Um, but it was a lot of those kind of things. Um, and then yeah, we we started going to conventions really for Doctor Who at the time, but some of them yeah. had Star Trek people at those cons. So that we were we were uber nerds. Julie made me a uh, TNG blue jumpsuit season one uniform. Quadron call me. I mean, when, I was like eleven. I made that. I thing. know. Wow. And I when I it went, I was like, well, but you would have been about twelve. <laughs> Never or so. sewn since. Yeah. No, our grandmother helped me 
make the outfit. And I remember I had to get the right blue. Yeah. And so the material, they didn't sell Star Trek uniform material back sure. then. So I had to go to like, you know, the Joann's fabric and look for something that was sort of, I think you ended up getting something that was akin to like sweatpant material. But it's it was actually worked out incredibly hot. well because I can still kind of it's wear it. It's stretchy. Uh, That's and, incredible. Yeah. Uh, this, the, it it's may resourceful. Not be, it it may resourceful. not be a great thing, but yeah, it does have the, it is, it is very accurate in terms of it has stirrups. You're welcome. Generation, That's right. Needing to have stirrups That's for right. the jumpsuit. Accuracy. Uh, <laughs> so you were in, in indoctrinated into yeah. Star Trek oh, just much. just from the beginning. Yeah. yeah and our the, parents were nerds. I yeah. kind of. I mean, that I love helps. it. I respect it. My my parents were nerds. Um, my my parents are equal like Star Trek Star Wars fans. Oh, so yeah. like oh, yeah. we get like this unique. Well, and and my father and I share. Uh, you know, good Lord of the Rings in, in there oh, as yeah. well. So we. As most families, uh, we are held together by movie quotes. But uh, <laughs> as as our, our, our yes. yeah, um, I'm glad we're not alone in that. Yeah, yeah, it's like a yeah. an unspoken universal little little <laughs> yeah. thing about nerd families. I feel like, but so you're indoctrinated at a very young age. Yes. Yeah, but it didn't stop there. No, because you've, I mean, even recently in recent years, yeah, uh, been even more involved. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will say that in in the lead up to our actual involvement with Star Trek as an official, you know, the series and the franchise, um, I was writing fan fiction before it was called fan fiction, but I was writing my own TNG stories. Um, uh, yeah, and they were they were very much Mary Sue tales. We brought well, them out way. today. I did not. Bring, <laughs> I was about to say. I did I'm not curious about where these I are. I found them. I know where they are. I'm not bringing. We'll them talk out. later about it. Yeah, um, yeah. But in any case, uh, <laughs> so it was always a dream to write for Star Trek, and yeah. um, the Hageman brothers, Dan and Kevin, uh, who were the showrunners for Star Trek Prodigy, uh, we had a, a nice lunch with them where they wanted to uh, us to come come and write on an animated show that at that time was not Star Trek. But we said, eh, we're probably action writers. We don't know about this. You know, if it was Doctor Who or Star Trek, we'd probably be on board. You know, we'd do it in a heartbeat. Just putting that out there. Yeah. yeah. And they went, well, that's interesting. <laughs> because we just pitched this Star Trek show. And we were like, OK, <laughs> call us. We'll do it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we were writing on and co-producers on the first season of Star Trek Prodigy. We Yay. wrote two episodes and were credited on the two other episodes oh, yeah. that yeah, yeah. the entire room uh, worked right. on. So technically, we have credits on four episodes. Um, and then uh, we had other things going on during the pandemic, so we were we were a little too busy to go on trying to season two. Trying to survive was one of them. Yeah. yeah. So season two, we we're not in, but we were very excited about it coming to Netflix now. Oh and, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And look forward to it. Yeah. Very much. But it was a great experience. It was a great way that I was able to use a lot of the useless knowledge that had built up in my brain over well, all 40 that stuff plus as years. us as kids trying to write a show for those kids like that you know yeah if you're that age and then also for us now being older to be able to watch it and appreciate it as well so that was that was the fun part of putting easter eggs in for the you know the four quadrant viewing for yeah. the adults and then the kids can enjoy it and get a nice entryway in yeah. yeah i think that was probably the main thing that was attractive about doing that show in particular was the idea that we could write the show that we always wished we'd had mm -hmm. as very as much younger children but also write a show that we as adults would appreciate yes, that right. we would be able to watch and wouldn't feel like we're watching a cartoon yeah uh, which is generally i think the thing that once people sit and actually watch Star Trek Prodigy, they realize it's not written for children. It's not lower decks, but it is <laughs> We're not talking down to anyone. It, it's it's really about being an entry point for Star Trek, which yeah. has over 900 hours of content now. Yeah. And um, where do you start? <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Where do you start? I mean, uh, we've talked before in, in terms of just Star Trek and, and entrance into Star Trek. I've only been a part of like Star Trek universe for the last two years and only really been i would consider myself trekkie the last year mm. um like excitingly enough uh as of as of today i am uh almost done with uh season uh six of tng so that's right. like like i'm very excited in this current like, moment i'm i've been like really because i've been through them oh yeah tng in and voyager order. been really uh watching those in tandem with one another because they have some good like Good little, uh, 
what's the word like crossovers you know like with yeah. Q and, and you know yeah for sure I so mean, it's, a it's lot been of those were kind of concurrent I mean the, yeah. the season of TNG the last seasons of TNG were concurrent with Deep Space Nine and yes yes nine was concurrent with Voyager for but that had started <laughs> believe it or not that it started because we were planning during the five year anniversary planning mm-hmm. we were planning to watch First Contact oh, ah right. ah yeah. that segue <laughs> uh, but we were planning on watching First Contact right. um, and. I hadn't, I mean, I wanted to go into it being excited. I wanted to go into it being a fan. Uh, and I hadn't seen enough TNG at that point, Okay, you know? Um, yeah. And so I didn't have like that that same connection uh, with, with our, the characters or I hadn't even seen the Borg yet outside of our video game, you know? Because I was mm. playing our game way before I'd ever watched the show. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So you're so, watching the show like, hey, I, I know those Yeah, guys. exactly. It, yeah. Which actually kind of made it fun because I, okay. I was having like this unique, <laughs> yeah. like, knowing who people were from that instance. So, That's so cool. leading up to uh, November when we we flew people out to LA and we did we did like a private screening on the Paramount lot oh, wow. um, and everybody got to watch First Contact in the theater, which can I just say for watching my very first Star Trek film ever, that was that I'm set hold, the bar real up. high for all the other ones. <laughs> it's a good got, theater. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was a good theater. So um, that being said, like I bringing like all of that like back you know as as that entry point like it was really cool to be able to to experience that as a fan mm-hmm. kind of like what you were saying about you know finally like having that that time to yeah. write for and and be involved in an IP that you you really enjoy and so uh, but first contact is different in and of itself because mm-hmm. the the plot the story itself uh, yeah. about how on on April 5th uh 2063 mm-hmm. um any day we now. any literally any day now <laughs> today actually just really really far away <laughs> really 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 far away um no but like just the whole premise right the of a first contact between aliens and humans, uh, specifically, I think in the film, it's Vulcans and humans um, right. when when they when they make that first contact. So, uh, really wanted to take a moment today to just kind of like mm. I don't know, like kind of live in that space a little bit and, yeah. and talk about um, the film and and what first contact kind of means to the fans. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, what's interesting is that the movie wasn't a total complete. You know, there was there. Let me start over. (laughs) Let me start. Uh, The movie had a basis of canon behind Mm -hmm. it, so there was uh, there were references to, of course, the Vulcans being one of the first members of the the Federation, being one of the founding members, and that the first contact had been made between uh, Vulcans and humans. The specifics actually came about in a, a novel called Strangers from the Sky, which I read in high school, um, and I loved it. Uh, it was honestly one of my favorite novels that I ever wrote, and I think a lot of it ever was read. considered... Sorry, wrote, read. <laughs> Add that to the list of works. <laughs> Try that again. It's actually one of my favorite novels I ever read of the Star Trek novels that existed. It, it was considered... It was quasi, all about first contact. It was like quasi-canon. Because it included a lot of canon elements, but a lot of the the things that were in the book got solidified even within the movie First Contact Mm. in terms of, uh, I I wouldn't say the characterization of Zephyr Cochran was the same, but... uh, (laughs) He was a character. But yeah, I mean, (laughs) seriously, that was was something that, um, the name obviously was there, but they, they, they took for the movie and I think they really made that a character. Yeah. They made him a person and he felt real as opposed yeah. to when they mentioned Zephyr Cochran who created, you know, warp the warp energy or warp drive that yeah. he's the he's the statue and he yeah. you, you know, know they give a reference to that in in the movie. Right. You know, they they talk about how oh you're you you're not what we expected yeah. from from what was written or like oh, what's in the history books. Because the statue and then he's yeah. such a goofball. I mean, it would yeah, be like yeah. any of us going back in time and, and discovering, you know, the, the reality of maybe one of the founding fathers. And we know a lot more about them now as real people. But for a long time when you're in school and you learn about them, they are, you know, faces on currency. 
yeah. and uh, busts in museums. And, and you things. watch the John Adams HBO series. And, and you, like, you go, hey, wow, okay, okay. Ben yeah. Franklin Ben was Franklin really was a doctor. Guy. Huh? Okay. So uh, <laughs> it's a little bit like that, I think. But the movie, yeah, we that was a big deal going to that movie when we saw it. Yeah. Um, we it, saw it in the theater, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, with a group of friends. Yeah, for sure. And it was it was a Borg. You know, I think our parents were with us, too. Oh, yeah. It was a big a whole movie thing. Audi. Oh, yeah. So then, deal. like, your first impressions going into that, you know, how did you... I think our expectations were pretty high because high, and then sort of based on what we'd just seen in the series, right? Because it landed right in that pocket of post Picard. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it was uh, deborged. Yes, and and the fact (laughs) that they took that story and they kept. They, they kept the continuity of that and yeah. showing the, the PTSD and the ramifications yeah. of having been through that process. That was a that was a huge thing, I think, that people coming into Star Trek watching that movie, I think it's actually a great movie to, for people to see if they've never seen Star Trek because yeah. it's an entertaining movie. Yeah. But it, it also is, has that great cold open that sort of jumps you back into it right yeah. it's a very comic book like we're going to take the first two pages remind you what was in the last issue and then you know yeah because it does start with wolf 359 doesn't it it's it's him in the yeah yeah, yeah it's him yeah. as locutus mm-hmm. so you get that at least basis or grounding of this is what this movie is going to be about to some degree and then you throw it because it's the first contact in a way of the borg with earth but it's also first literal first contact i think what i like most about the movie though is the just what you said the fact that there are consequences like the fact that every that butterfly effect that happens and that you get to see it's not just okay so he was turning to borg moving on like you you get the like yeah uh the ptsd and then of course the first contact of it all and that was pretty rare at the time for for television series serialized television you didn't a lot of shows it it was sort of uh incident of the week trauma of the week yeah and and like you didn't see it in tos really you know Spock's brain gets put in a jar essentially and then you know it's like the next episode we don't it's talk like, about no, it nothing again. ever happened yeah. you know it's yeah. fine he's totally fine um and that was you know intentional sure. they, they wanted to be able to show those episodes in any in kind order. of order but uh I think that was a really great sort of harbinger for what was to come in yeah the rest of Star Trek because it, it really opened the door for DS9 and being able to do serialized right. storytelling and Voyager and some of the others so first contact is something that we um talked a lot about in the prodigy room of course because it's mm-hmm. sort of the the kids we'll call them kids first contact with anything right they've kind of not been anywhere so for them it was a learning process of like what are the rules of first contact mm-hmm. you know what can and can't we do and either breaking those rules which is what Star Trek TOS and, and you know next gen did all the time anyway it was always about somehow the rule got broken right yeah and what were the ramifications of that right and what was the procedure what was the process a great episode of tng called who watches the watchers which was Mm. where you got to see uh riker and i think it was deanna troy like they're both embedded in the society in preparation they're doing the research for first contact are these people ready to be uh you know, reached out to and, and uh, you know, introduced yeah. to a larger universe. And that stuck with us in a way we didn't know because a couple of years ago we wrote a pilot. It's not, t- it's not Star Trek related at all, but it is about first contact, but mm. from the aliens POV here on oh. Earth. And so there's something in that we kind of took from the movie first contact of like, what was it like when the Vulcans, you know, first came down and, uh, and so it, it it somehow it still is in our writing, even yeah. if we're not doing Trek specific. I still feel like that is a, a huge story that can be told yeah. at some point because Enterprise, even the, the series Enterprise came after that, right? After that first contact right. moment. First contact, the movie gets you right up to that moment where and the Vulcans land. Yeah. And then that's it. That's oh. all you see. So the, the, the sort of in between that, yeah. how did all of that coalesce? is a story that I think is still out there to be told at some point if yes. somebody wanted to. We'll th- do it. All right, fine, we'll do it. No, oh, right. twist my arm. No, I, I found it really, I found it really impressive like going in as somebody that was witnessing all of it for the first time. Yeah. You know, just how, how the writing was done um, to just kind of wrap everything in together, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And especially going into that point, I hadn't seen the follow-up episode that comes after the fact. Okay. Right. So oh, wow. yeah. for me, I'm going from, I went from, you know, the lead up, yep, watching the movie, 
and then picking right back up. And it felt great. really really cool really natural like I, I don't know I felt like I was watching it as intended it, it worked know? it was organic for you that's yeah. really cool yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely doing something that the Marvel Cinematic Universe figured out years later yeah. which was yes. how to integrate uh, a TV series with a feature film but just kind of going the other yeah, it's the almost other like it in, in some ways was setting like a I don't know, like not quite a precedent, but like an example. There weren't or, a whole lot of those. Yeah, no. there were. There weren't a lot of. I mean, X Files is the only other one I can think of where there was some kind of. And that was thread. only the 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 overarching story about his sister and cigarette smoking man. There wasn't any sort of uh, continuity or serialization that they took to those movies like Star Trek did. Yeah, no, it, they treated those movies as episodes, mm -hmm. like uh, standalone episodes, yep. as opposed to it featuring too much of the lore. Yeah. Um, Whereas this, First Contact really did sort of require you to know a little bit about the lore, or at least yeah. in the beginning, not lore the character, obviously, but uh, at least... Uh, <laughs> I love that I understand the references now. <laughs> like, this was a very different conversation when we first started doing content. I didn't, yeah. Like, like, I'm just like, uh -huh. but, but But if you didn't know the lore, like you, Julie said, that cold open, the opening of the movie helps you ground yourself in, okay, I kind of, I know a little bit about Star Trek. Yeah. I know a little bit about these characters. Now I understand what this event was and how it's now going to play a part in the film I'm about to watch. Well, and, and going into that and knowing the characters, you know, mm -hmm. there's a unique, I'll say unique, there's a unique take, I, I think, really on, on Picard kind of working through this whole what you were talking about like the PTSD from from yeah. being assimilated and then having to um, be reentered back into like society and and yeah. they they very like briefly touch on it just in the show in but the they show. they really show you know kind of those emotional moments that he went through in the movie and I thought that that was a really unique take because um, watching the show he's such a you know like. I don't know, like an immovable, yes, um, sort of, uh, or he's an immovable leader, yeah. captain, you know, and and you really see these moments of uh, struggle, right, on humanity. on the screen, yeah. humanity, and it, it almost, I I don't know, it helps you kind of connect in a different way of he's human. He doesn't always. Yeah, the captains always kind of come across as like, you know, especially Kirk, like we're doing this and this is how we're going and yeah. I have to take the lead and you're like, okay, great. Somebody's in charge. Jean-Luc as well. But then whenever you have a captain where you get to see a little bit of that underbelly of that emotional side, I think that's yeah. hugely like, yeah, that brings the audience in immediately as yeah. a as another character. Almost. I think one of the reasons that, trauma. Yeah, sorry. I, I think one of the reasons that the first contact movie is predominantly considered the best of the TNG movies is because it follows the mold of the series a little bit more closely and that everybody gets a piece. I think yeah. one of the big learnings from Generations, which came before it, was that they it was a little too imbalanced. And it was in part because they were featuring William Shatner as Kirk. Yes. And so you had to spend a lot of time telling servicing that piece that of the character. story and servicing the character. So here you could give Picard a story and the B-plot that's happening on Earth with pretty much everybody else. Well, um, even in the first scene with them around the, you know, they do it around the horn at the table where yes. each of them get a line. I don't know about this, Captain. And, blah, blah, blah. and you're like, okay, now I've got everybody's POV. I know who these characters are. Which, even if I haven't seen the show, I get that he's a robot or right. what, you know, like you're understanding. Which is, uh, that is that is I one of the things that was great and distinctive <laughs> about the show is in, in the time period that it aired in, in the 90s, where he was a lot more deliberative. He did ask for a lot more input from his crew. Yeah. You know, Kirk would rely on Spock and Bones primarily, yeah. sometimes Scotty, but really he didn't have a people sitting around a table all voicing their opinion about something mm -hmm. and then him uh, making a decision. It was very much Kirk. Logic, kind of, emotion. Yeah, Kirk kind of yeah. just makes his decision and goes with it, which is a totally valid, you know, leadership style. <laughs> but there was something interesting about the fact that Picard was a lot more of a, a, a mediator and a deliberator. Yeah, that actually has been a, a thing that I've noticed, you know, through watching and and just kind of looking at at the different. I don't want to. I don't want to say captain styles, but uh, captain's maneuvers or sure. something, <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, but you know, I was watching TNG and Voyager at the same time. Oh yeah, and Janeway has a lot of similarities to Picard. But also very different in terms of, of that sort of thing. You know, I, I feel like, you know, Janeway has always kind of been like, oh, I know what I'm going to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas, I'll hear you out. I'll hear you out. But <laughs> I've kind of made up my mind and, and I 
you know, can be reasoned with later, yes, you know, sure. whereas Picard has always, uh, at least in all the episodes I've seen, um, he's always done that. Yeah. Sat down. Crowdsourcing and a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's very open-minded about what possible decision to make. Yeah, yeah. You like, like that style better. I think I do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it took me a little while to get on, on the on the Picard train, you know? Interesting. Um, because Would I, I couldn't figure it out. Would you have liked him better with hair? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. I've seen that photo. I have seen, <laughs> I've seen the photos. I've, I've seen, well, and they kind of um, revisit that a little bit in uh, one of the later seasons. Oh. Um, oh, right, yes. When yeah, they, they with do the, the, back... the mind control uh Oh, uh, yeah, the inner light. And then also, I mean, well, that one, but they also, they when they go back and they do the, the flashback about the Stargazer, which is actually, oh. I think, the finale. When you okay, I haven't gotten there. See, but, spoilers, Shauna. Sorry, sorry. You, no, no, it's you, to see younger yeah. Picard. Look, I've had, what, 30 years to get here. Um, yeah. That's okay. She's No, but I did recently me, see an episode where uh, it, it, oh gosh, and I can't remember the race of aliens, but they, they um, are able to basically uh, read uh, minds and find like uh, repressed memories, all the oh, things. Oh, right, yes. Um, and there's a scene mm -hmm. where uh, Picard right. is walking Beverly to see her deceased husband and Great. he's got hair yes, <laughs> yes. i was like hold on a <laughs> <Yeah>. minute <laughs> I, forgot. I think i blocked that out it's yeah. it's it's only a good like it's i don't a, know 30 a, seconds yeah, you know a, it's, it's real short but, real short yeah um but no i've like that's been a, a really neat thing to admire as as a captain i mean even uh there are episodes where he will literally make decisions on such faith and trust in his team where mm -hmm. he's like I don't know how I feel about this, but you believe so strongly, so we're gonna go with it. That's you huge. know, um, they're like, uh, I, I could honestly like go into all the all the episodes, like even just yeah. recently, but I'm not gonna do that uh, because that, it, that gets off the point. But yeah, that's yeah. what was really cool, like tying back to this of seeing him struggle yeah. and be yeah. human. You but know. also be an action guy because that was yeah. one of the things oh, yeah. that was always a concern for a lot of especially TNG and onward was that Kirk was a man of action he was on he was leading the away team right. you know he was he was in he was in it there were very few times he would stay on the ship and unfortunately Picard had a number one he had Riker and yeah. Riker was always the guy leading the away teams and Picard was on the ship doing whatever uh, and I felt like first contact was definitely a movie where Picard got to do both. Like he yeah. he was doing that struggle, but part of getting through that struggle was him being man of action, um, you know, and fighting off the Borg it, it, on the Enterprise. Well, it, being his own man, yeah. unlike the Borg, where you're part of the uh, collective, collective, he right. had to actually, yeah, well, stand out. And he had to also overcome um, or work around, you know, the fact that his team was split up. Mm -hmm. uh, Data had been captured by the Borg and Borg yep. Queen. Right. Um, so it was really, I mean, testing him mentally and physically, um, which that in and of itself was a, an interesting plot. Borg yes. Queen. Uh, yeah. I, I'm i still undecided on that because I haven't seen enough of the Borg in general yep. and Trek yet. Yep. Um, I've only seen them three times, I think, so far. So okay. I can't really speak into that. But in terms of introducing the Borg Queen, mm thoughts there you know well i think that now i guess in series until the movie no you know she was introduced she was, in the show. She was wow. introduced in the movie and the reason why the borg queen existed was because of locutus ah. i mean they it, it was a direct response yeah. to the fact that they lost essentially yeah. the borg lost to humans and were pushed back and the borg queen was the way they were going to combat that Fix because that. Borg Queen actually does have a little bit of autonomy in her, you know, yeah. in personality. She is not like she the speaks other as one and as all. It's a yes. very unique yeah. character yeah. design, and they, and you got the hint of what they wanted for that out of Locutus. Yes, when Picard was in that position, and they sort of went, "This works. Let's double down on it." But let's make our own Borg Queen. We won't rely on. You know what I'm thinking else. of is Captain EO. <laughs> Oh my God! When really? Like You're gonna the, bring that yeah, up? Yeah, there's like the, she reminds me of the Borg Queen. It's fair. Go, I mean, you know, Angelica Captain Houston. Uh, does Come on, Angelica have a, Houston with like a, nails, and she's hanging around. And, yeah, okay. she definitely was hanging the whole from thing. like the. Scene. I'll add that to my search after yep. the fan fiction yeah, talk for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, but that, that I think that was uh, what made that particularly interesting to everybody was that the Borg Queen was a bit of a contradiction. Uh, yeah. for the Borg, and yet it made perfect sense for yes. the Borg. Yes, it was, it was that, that unique, 
hive mind mentality in a sense. But a, a hive has a queen. Exactly. So it so it made sense, sense but it felt yeah. it was different. It was different, but it, it like you said, it was contradictory. Yeah. But also made sense. But also, <laughs> yeah. And I think then that because of that and the popularity of that character, yeah, she became a, a, a part of the series later on in when you get to Voyager and, and some of those yeah, other shows head, because said, wow. they wanted to explore that more. Yeah. And, and understandably so. Like, what yeah. is that relationship? Um, that she has and and creating relationships and also the, the 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 ongoing story of the Borg attempting to make themselves even more perfect yeah. and overcoming their adapting. own threats and adapting yeah. to their own threats the things that threaten them more than because uh, they hadn't had any they hadn't yeah. had any threats until they kind of met us and then it was then you found out they had some other which ones when too. they originally met us they didn't consider us a threat at all they just not ignored our existence yep. you know you know we would walk by and they right. just not even which is yeah. pretty much how i feel any alien race making first contact with earth is gonna you're gonna be like eh. these neanderthals like what are they doing they don't they still got gas just cars eh. or something you know yeah like, yeah <laughs> But, no, and Q being the, uh, the 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 instigator of that, and and really setting yes. that all into motion in Q Who, I think it's the Borg episode. Um, yes, where he uh, he throws the ship, he literally so, throws, throws, throws it into them, yeah. into where the Borg are, and introduces them to, introduces the Borg to the humans decades before they would have normally right. come to find. So Q is responsible for first contact with the Borg. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Oh. Because that was first contact with the board. So he definitely didn't follow any rules. Yeah, of first contact. I didn't even. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. a, about how technically this all boils down to Q. To yeah. Q. It was interesting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think Playing the board would have found yeah. humans eventually, but without yeah. the foreknowledge that the Enterprise gets from Q interfering. Yeah. Um. They had no. They, they were able to take that knowledge and prepare. Yeah, so when right. even even though we weren't 100 percent prepared, when the when the Borg finally make it into our solar system and or at least into our the, our sector of the galaxy into Alpha Quadrant, mm -hmm. then there was at least some understanding that, oh, we have to have our shields uh, modulate so that they change frequency oh, we been dead know, in the water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and in order to withstand some of the attack because they will adapt the second right. that, wow. you know, and all in our phasers and all of that. So, so they thank were able you, to, Q, is what we should be yeah, saying. because He created a problem, but also provided a bit of a solution. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it is interesting. It was that episode the actual episode where Q, you know, uh, throws human mm -hmm. race <laughs> yeah. at the Borg um, makes you feel so small. Right. Uh, um, but you feel very powerless. I say you, but you, you know, yes. I mean, I, I felt it with them. Okay. Yes. So, so the cast, uh, the crew, uh, they feel so helpless. Like they, they recognize this is not something that I can do. Yeah. And, and it takes Q intervening again, you know, to um, pull them back out. out. Of it, right. Uh, well, yeah. Right. And I if think I remember correctly. But yes. Yeah. It, 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 they, he did finally save their bacon and get them out of there. But yeah. uh, it, but it was, you know, the pilot of TNG was all about Q telling humanity to look in the mirror and yeah. maybe, you know, take it down a notch in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, your feeling that you've got this. Yeah. You know, that you Universe. know how to explore the galaxy. You know how to make contact <laughs> with alien races. Honestly, you know, we've we've even made some strides with the Klingons and Romulans, our primary, you know, antagonist. Mm -hmm. Klingons are even now tacitly part of the the Federation. Yeah. You know, and they Feels don't feel like, like they got this unlocked. They got yeah. they got this unlocked. And Q yeah. comes, I'm going to judge humanity. Uh, and so you get that from minute one and encounter at Farpoint, and then he comes back and he says. You know what? We're gonna test you a little bit more. Yeah. Let's go put you up against something that I know you can't beat. Right. And that's the real test. I think he I can't recall the end of the episode, but my recollection was that he was impressed that humans were able to do as much as they did, but we were gnats. Like right. we would have they would have been defeated. And they've and they they ended the episode realizing this. And so yes. when we see them again, um, by this point, I uh, you know that it's it's not their first encounter, right? Uh, or not their first contact. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so that they go into it with a little bit more of an idea, mm -hmm. and then face the challenge of Picard uh, being assimilated, and and um, then later on you put the actual first contact film 
And then after the fact, that opens up the door, kind of like what you guys were saying, to the Star Trek universe in general. Mm. Um, it adds a different storyline. Uh, at this point, I think by the time uh, we we see them the second time in TNG, I, scientists have actually already been studying the Borg for this long because yes. they yeah. had that initial first contact. Okay. And then, um, you, you know, the tie-ins with DS9, the tie-ins with Voyager, you know, it just automatically expanded the Star Trek universe just from this one plot. One moment. This one moment, yeah. which is a very kind of unique thing about, I think, just Star Trek in general. They do a really good job of just kind of touching and, and reaching all the things. Well, I, and, and consequences. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Ha- and, and that was something cause we and brought. Effects. Cause and effects. Yeah. The prodigy, you know, we did a first contact storyline tied into that. I think it'll probably play out more in season two, mm-hmm. but that idea of all of this happened all of the, all of what the diviner was doing was because of a failed first contact in his mind failed with his own planet you know so first contact's extremely important and the residual effects you know affect not just that time period but all of time if they have yeah. the ability to time travel so yeah. it's a huge deal i think about it a lot like what would we really do like yeah. how would we want first contact like would you want the slow burn of first contact which is like oh we think we got a little radio signal there's a little something something coming in so like you, you get the idea that maybe we're not alone and then you can let that trickle into society and then you start building on that like how much time do you need or do you just want the band-aid ripped off of like oh here they are you know like i don't know what's better uh, yeah I, I really think about it a lot uh, and, and they <laughs> and they naturally i mean they they talk about it a lot throughout the series because kind of like, well, in, in the film, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the Vulcans, you know, visit. And I think they're essentially like they were just kind of waiting until we, we got to that point. A little under cover, And then I feel they, like we they really set the precedent. I was going to say, contact. because yeah. then uh, that same theme is, is carried throughout the series of like uh. we watch these societies to see when they're ready for first contact. Mm-hmm. So it, it sets up that precedent as well. And sometimes they're ready. Right. And then other times they're not super not ready. They're super not ready. And the, the FTL travel, right? The faster than life tra- it was the the impetus for when they'd make first contact, right? But was that because they knew if we had faster than light, we were we already knew there was other there were other aliens out there, there were other species out there, it was, or it was just that it, we were smart enough to be, okay, we can let them in the cool club. It was cool more about club. the technology. It was more about the technology. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. It, recalling that in the timeline of Star Trek, there had been a huge war on Earth. And so uh, they were right. living basically in a post-apocalypse. Yeah. Um, and so it was very much driven. You have to think about the time period and the context for movies. Yeah, now I'm thinking the of movies. the 100. So there was, there was <laughs> yeah. the, okay. the context for the that. movie is that it's, it comes out in the 90s. There's a huge emphasis on global warming and mm. on you know destruction of the Earth and what do we do if we basically destroy our own planet. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there was a lot of have we of, answered that and oh, no okay. of course not yeah. but that you know that idea that this guy is going to tinker around with using this energy right. and it doesn't have dilithium yet but he's got yeah. you know a lot yeah. of other things at his disposal and he is able to make this work and the i you know the the caveat of course of the movie is could he have done it without the interference of a few people from the future Hard to say. Because it's, it's hard to know now. Know. He'd been sitting at a bar and he was off. But it was in history. Yeah. And and that part wasn't mentioned in history originally. Right. So it 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 once again it's, the door is just it's the timey wimeyness of it. Like yeah. wibbly did wobbly he do it by wine. himself yeah. the first time or did this did always help? happen? Did this did he always? But it is interesting to just see the setup, happened. the scene of of you know you get to I'm not going to call it a settlement, but you get to mm-hmm. to where they're at, where the humans are at on Earth, and there's. It's not very advanced, right? Right. You know, uh, at that point, and and you've got Zephram, uh, like, just kind of not really being Mr. Scientist in general, right. and he just like you kind of what you were saying, he was tinkering around and just kind of doing a thing. Um, and they just and so nudged him a little. Yeah. So it's interesting to see that 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 is the the point in which aliens would make first contact of like, oh, you've uncovered you know warp drive. 
all right, let's talk, you know, like, let's meet. It is yeah. random, right? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that they know there's other species out right. there. It's just, right. oh, we just invented, you know, a nuclear bomb. Oh, you're Which, ready. No, right. what? Which, by <laughs> the way, I mean, that, that was sort of the premise as they went forward was yeah. if they had reached a certain technological point at which they were going to be able to reach know, other planets like, and I, we need to look at this rule is what i'm saying I, i'm saying like you, you're welcome to try to change it i don't probably, know that it's, it's probably going. it's probably in, the, in tiny print of like, the prime directive yeah, there's gotta be like a little asterisk oh sure or maybe well, yeah, it's, it's funny because we looked for basically the written version of the prime directive we did and we finally found it it's in a book called uh the history of the federation i think or yeah, something okay. like that book. and it written by david goodman who had written <laughs> i apparently just need Star to Trek. expand my library it's one page <laughs> And yeah, it's Sean basically, like, it's, it's, on, it's a little like the Ten Commandments, and it's like, thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do this. Really? Yeah. And and yeah. so that really helped guide us, because they would mention, this is violation of the prime direction. General prime order directive, one. General yeah. order one. This is, uh, this is within mm -hmm. the, but you didn't have like something that pulled all of those references together. Shockingly. And put yeah. it into basically a document that said, well, this is the charter and this is the prime directive. How someone do it? Yeah. For, <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. you're on the ship? You're like, all right, let's get out the uh, all general right, order so. number one. Which, <laughs> uh, would, yeah, it's, uh, but that was helpful to find. I mean, so there have been things that have been added to the, you know, the entirety of the franchise over the years in very small ways yeah, that yeah, have had yeah. major influence. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of things that, that were done in what were considered non-canon works that were brought into canon. Yeah. We did a lot of that in Prodigy. That. Um, and and bas basically the rule is, by the way, for canon, it's anything that's filmed content. Yeah. If it was filmed, uh, it's canon. If it's I written, actually didn't know that. Yeah, if yeah. it's written... It's, it's a little gray area. We'll and talk it's, about it. It's a, it's, it's, they'll it, they'll most hear of that, you out. Yeah. Most of that is on memory beta. The, and and uh, Gene Roddenberry didn't even think that the animated series after TOS was canon. Mm -hmm. But over time, it's fans canon. And, and people who came into writing Star Trek considered it way more canon than Roddenberry. And so they basically made strides on like, referencing things that happened in the animated series. Oh, in order like to the character Drek in a... Uh... Prodigy? Right. Or they, well, they would mention things like, um, you know, there was a reference in one episode about Spock having a pet. Yes. And so there was an episode of um, the animated series where you see Spock Spock's with pet. his pet. And so then that became something that they canonized in Discovery mm. when you got to see sort of the backstory of Michael Burnham and living with. God, Sarek and Spock right. and that family. So it's like they, there are things that like the fans who now write for Star Trek who yeah we're like grew that counts that it, counts bring it in you know w w definitely there's a little bit of cherry picking but it's like this works this is great this does a actually explain some stuff for yeah. us yeah. in the show that makes sense so let's put it into the I canon. Think that's like one of like the really fun things also just about Trek um, and and the tying in the the various. Mm -hmm. films and and tv and whatnot but you literally have trek experts to determine like this fits this doesn't like i know yeah. like we i know that you guys know jvc mm -hmm. um but like my my first initial meeting with him i was i was baby trek baby <laughs> and now like i have come to uh have you know a couple conversations around uh, some of the folks at Paramount or in game and like even the people that write our narrative like Aww. they are so big and and on like making sure everything is narratively Trek that's you know great. and and that's like kind of one of the things that makes all of this so much fun is as we're going into these newer shows as things are they fit they yeah. tie you know like they're meant to continue on and, and and keep the story going and there's definitely some contortions that happen in making it all fit yeah uh and and you find the loopholes yeah. uh like we we worked very hard to find you know loopholes of how can we tell a time travel story that hasn't been told th this way before mm -hmm. how can we do this trope that is a classic star trek trope but that do it in a way that it would be interesting and fresh and yeah. and that's sort of the challenge of every show that comes along now um you know starfleet academy whenever it comes along it will have the same challenge yeah. of how do i tell these stories or these types of stories without it feeling like i've already seen this the one. great news is it lead by character that yeah. show always is led by always character. leads by character yeah. so and i i think it's also 
the fact that the term is world building like it's not world built like we're still going we're yeah. still building this yeah. world well so. and that was i think the advantage of picard jumping ahead in yes. time you Absolutely. know and, and just saying with you know time has passed great so it has physically passed and i did that yeah. you know they did that with tos but they gave it a much bigger time jump between tos and tng yes. but you know you still wanted to be able to use picard and use other characters so we're giving it the the 20 30 year space that it has yeah. been since you last saw these characters and actually playing that through and seeing yeah. what that just is. viewers are more savvy in the in the we're you know we're we're used to get some words out viewers are more savvy we're used to uh, serialized storytelling we're used to being able to jump around in time we're, we expect those sort of um big big leaps in uh storytelling i don't even know what i was saying yeah no that's <laughs> I knew you were saying yes. The Words audience, audience has been trained. Yet? So the audience has been trained, whether it was on Star Trek or any other show, over the last thirty years. Yeah. You get trained from watching a thing. That's the word I was looking. Yeah. yeah. It's not just what Law and Order being the case of the week, or you know, Planet of the Week right. in the case of Star Trek. You can tell ongoing stories, and people want that. That is expected in a lot of ways. And they if you drop, some... if you drop something like, oh yeah, I used to have a pet, and it's Spock. I am going to hundred percent expect in that season yeah. or another season you are going to show me an episode where i get to see the pet or we refer to the pet or i see a photo of the pet like you can't just drop little nuggets and then yeah. just leave them or if they did we pick them up yeah. <laughs> we, we pick them up in a different we show <laughs> <laughs> we will use it i yeah. vaguely remember this being much well it's uh you know picard has has the fish in his ready room mm -hmm. um i didn't know that for the longest time and then somebody mentioned it and yeah. I now every episode, like when he walks in front of that area, I look to see if I can see the little tiger fish, like or uh, yeah. ti not is it tiger fish, lionfish, 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 lionfish. It's well, it's one of those. Pretty sure. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> someone will fact check that. It's, we'll we'll have to double check. I don't want to speak incorrectly. I I'm, I'm pretty sure it's picture. very pretty. I'm pretty sure it's a lionfish. It um. But I like we we kind of got on that. We kind of got on that, like talking about uh you know, when, like the pivotal moment of, of when the Vulcans decided to make that first contact and mm -hmm. then, and we got into the whole thing. But kind of going back to that, yeah. you know, obviously it's a pivotal moment in the film and it sticks out uh, on a, I guess, less serious note. Were there other like moments that you can recall in the film that just kind of really stick out to you. I know like for me, uh, seeing Deanna Troy in the bar uh, with with Zephram was, was a big one for me. Like I just thought it was, what is it? Like we don't have time to talk about yeah, uh, we don't have time to talk about time. Yeah, you know? we don't have time to talk about time. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, we're out of time. It, oh I, yeah, because I mean they were they're used to drinking synthahol, which doesn't get you drunk, right? And she's <laughs> drinking real tequila. That is the greatest. And getting hammer hammer yes <laughs> and you, you know so you get to see an element but that character that that works because you know that character and how right really mentally controlled she is like her she has right. control of herself so to see you don't her see her like not upright happy. like yeah, yeah to yeah. see her really let loose do in they that explain way. the synth do they explain that in that scene like what that's why she or Riker, do you have to kind of know that i think Riker, i think he alludes you just, to they it? just alludes assume to that it. anyone watching is gonna oh it's a woman drinking she's getting drunk like well, but to know that extra level him, of right? like oh they yeah. don't get drunk in the future like that's cool yeah yeah or, or there are ways but you have to kind of go outside the work that little deep cut romulan ale maybe you know some yeah. Klingon blood wine mm -hmm. those things are not synthahol federation is synthahol you know and that's yeah. that's kind yeah. of their deal but like that's that is scene. definitely that's, that's a great a moment yeah. i think for me one of the best moments in the movie that i i always think about is um is when Patrick Stewart and Alfre Woodard are mm. in the ready room and they're having the conversation mm. about the future and about the enterprise. And this is really the, the vulnerable moment for him oh, too, talking about yeah. what happened to yeah. him. Yeah. And she is of the past in his in his, you know, timeline. And he is telling this person all of these things that are going to happen and it's terrifying and and you can't help but put yourself in that position like how would you what feel if somebody were saying this if yeah. somebody yeah. came from the future it's all over said, her face it's so great yeah i mean she's so great in that movie but uh it it, it does lily i couldn't think of her name all this her character name lily <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's lily and picard talking about it and and having that 
um, really intimate moment before then things go really crazy for the rest of the second act and into the third act. So yeah. uh, that to me is a it's a quiet moment, but it's one that I really it's a love. powerful moment. Yeah, yeah, those work. I I don't have one to add. What? I don't not have a single one moment. <laughs> not one that just sticks out and you're like, I'm oh to man. Think I, of one. Uh, uh, here, I'll give you one. Tell me one. Uh, 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 data. I? I was gonna say. I knew you were gonna say about data. Data, data getting the, the patch of skin. Yeah, right? it was so gross. It's gross, it grossed, but it's interesting. Yeah, right? he, he gets yeah, the, the, the pain sensors yeah. and, yeah, and everything. They flip, on, they flip on that in motion chip. I'm such a data fan, so I'm like, I know, but it's, but like, it's cool. There's a little body horror to that to me. Yeah. I don't know. That probably wasn't my favorite. I don't know, but like you're also witnessing in that moment, mm-hmm. um, as much as an android can want to think, he's mm. always wanted that. Yeah. So he's literally being faced with that choice of like, like I've always wanted to be human, and this is the closest I can get. And this, here it is. This here it's it is. Chance. You yeah. know, so it's it's an interesting moment of yeah, it's creepy, but also that's all he's wanted. Yeah, he's wanted I, emotions. He's wanted to feel. That's a good one. I would say the introduction of the Borg. I'll say introduction now because in my head she'd already existed. But you're right. She's that was her introduction, the Borg Queen. Yeah, that it's that a, pivotal yeah. moment where she is coming down, coming down or amazing. whatever, lowered down into her. Insert Captain suit. EO clip here. Yes, just <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no, now I, I really do have to go. Look Literally that is up. similar, but uh, it really is similar. <laughs> Sorry, I will admit it. But yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is because it's that idea of what can be more terrifying than the Borg. It's the Borg with someone who well, has yes, the ability to strategize. And you realize how great a threat he is in that. And I mean, Data's kind of always been a a threat in a sense because they they kind of sure. go through it in, in several episodes of, of him being compromised in a sense but mm. you really see it in the mm-hmm. movie when they when they take him he's such yeah. a damsel in distress that data that, yes. that data <laughs> but i mean he gets a great amount of character development over yes. the years more like, than anyone i think i think besides, <laughs> I mean, he's always learning oh my god <laughs> he's always learning i mean that character was ripe for giving him a lot of evolution over time. But I think that they that where they were more successful with some characters than others. But I think at least for yeah. first contact, you got the feeling that everybody got serviced in some small way. Yes. That the, everybody had, had at a least line. a good moment. Yeah. Um, I'm always going to believe that they do Dr. Crusher dirty most of the time. But I still find that like even in that movie that she I, gets a, a little bit to do. I do feel like total side note. Um, I did feel that like the first couple seasons, well, granted she wasn't in the second Even season, the second season uh, but when they bring her back, especially seasons five and, and six, she gets a lot more yes uh, to, uh, do. to she do. Gets, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, yeah. Ma'am. so they, it, it comes around. But we'll, we'll, we'll have a Dr. Crusher conversation we should. later. I think we should. She's definitely my space I've, mom. I've started to become a, a Crusher fan. Space mom. She's my yeah, space mom Yeah, she's, sure. she's a good space mom. <laughs> um, no. Um, I, I mean, there's a reason my hair is kind of reddish. I, didn't I, I realize Honestly, that. I, you mentioned Crusher earlier, and I wondered, does this have anything to do? I don't think I knew consciously. But I always wanted to be a redhead. Hey, and because redheads I loved have fun. Her. And, and she had deep, dark red hair Beautiful in the first hair. season. Yeah. Like, super red. And we I talked about hair three times in this podcast. I know. Not podcast. What about Technic- yeah, Technically, we didn't film some of them. Okay, yeah. Good. But you know, the, 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 and the color changed over seasons. Like it was light, it was dark, it was strawberry blonde, you know, it was this, it was that. And so I kind of, I think have taken that over time and I've done that because I've, I think so. I've yeah, had we, a lot we of gravitate, variation. We gravitate towards certain characters. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'd probably venture and guess that you gravitate towards Crusher over, yes. over most, I don't, I don't know who, who you'd say. Well, uh, TOS Bones, cause I thought he was just the funny one who's sort of cantankerous mm-hmm. and then uh tng i probably ooh, uh no yeah okay yeah probably <laughs> i was I gonna think. say like tasha yar at first but then i was like well you have to lose a few tasha yars to get a wharf so <laughs> Uh, I, I always like those sort of characters. Like war, the the sort of Ron Swanson characters are my favorite. So probably Worf is the uh, Bones version of the TOS and cantankerous. Uh, you know, the thing that guy. worked out best for Worf was going to DS Nine because he yeah. actually got a way <laughs> more character play development or something. Yeah, right? he got a lot more character development over on DS Nine. You know, it, it, there's a great video that's compiled online of all of the times that Worf says we should do X, and everyone goes no. <laughs> I've I've seen this video, and I've I've also seen. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I've also seen oh like God. there's a compilation of every time he goes and uh, immediately draws his phaser before anybody says anything or yeah. whatever because oh. he 
uh, he's ready he's always ready yeah he's security guy yeah he's security yeah so he's so, always but, but like yeah his yeah. his instinct is always to do like we're gonna attack and picard goes mm, uh, play that not. let's wait yeah. a minute and you're like poor wharf like he never just gets one time he just he's the give voice it to of him. let's let's do this thing and, and, and sometimes tells him no. whenever they tell him no it's like ah he was right you know yeah but, I, i'm glad <laughs> they went that way eventually yeah. because yeah, it he was right a few times give like him a win should have been a little more proactive it almost became like a comedic like relief after a while yeah so it was, was definitely i mean that was a good meme yeah to put so together. if you haven't seen that compilation I gotta, it's, it's a that'll it's a be my it's a good one okay and yeah, it, yeah, and yeah it's yeah. almost everybody that tells him no oh of, yeah about, of something so good yeah no so okay so Sit we down wharf. <laughs> i'm sorry i know we go way down the no ra- the i love hole. it i love it and and again there's, i selfishly there's two love minutes it I'm, I'm of living. interesting stuff in here right yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. find something to cut in there no i love it because i like i said i'm experiencing a lot of the stuff for the first time it's amazing so like for me i have just excitement around talking about stuff that i'm like you know i've been a part of the player base now for now over two years but um like actually understanding and and being a part of that is like a, a different feeling i was like i can participate Is like i can sit at the adult table when you get you know? like a character and you're like oh, i just saw that episode yes, like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like cool. i i i hit um i mean I, I knew Worf had a son way longer before i saw him on the show oh. mm-hmm. and and so i've Spoilers. been uh, i know yeah so i you know just he recently saw you know. yeah i just recently <laughs> saw like several episodes with with alexander and it was funny i was actually in the community a few nights ago mm-hmm. and i hadn't seen like the follow-up of of Worf's, uh where he has to have his spine. Uh, oh, yeah, that on. one. Yeah. Because uh, they bring Alexander back for that mm-hmm. one. But uh, before I'd gotten to that point, you know, we had been introduced to his son. This is a total side tangent, so totally fine. But uh, <laughs> they introduce his son, and then Worf just says, okay, well, you can go stay with my parents. And then you don't see him again yeah. for like a Thank whole you. season or something like that, or a half a season. Yeah. And I was literally talking to our community, like, so like, what happened? To what happened to the kid? Yeah. <laughs> Does he come back? And, and kid actors are tough. They yeah. Well, and and literally like the next day, uh, I ended up because I I binge, but I ended up seeing the episode where he comes back the next day. So it's like oh, okay, okay, he's but he's, that was a around. good season, you know. We probably, it was. There was a, there was a lot of stuff. Julie's going on. sitting there going. Shauna, when are they bringing... Like, he's got a son out there. Like, we gotta... What's, yeah, and, and you get to see Alexander a lot more in DS9. Yeah. I mean, he, he makes an appearance yeah. once or yeah. twice there, too. But that's, but. like, a, a thing in general. Like, we t- talked on this earlier, but just those breadcrumbs of, yeah. like... So you mention fun. a thing one time, or you see a thing the one yeah. time, and then it just kind of opens up this door for, like, spiraling. Yeah. And so now I, I have this this need and this want um, in honor of today, in honor of First Contact yes. Day. I'm gonna have to like make it a ritual or something sit down watch the film a, a special way it's not gonna be the same as when i watched I it a couple months ago yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think i don't think i can call up paramount and be like hey can i come sit in the theater uh but i definitely will be i've got a watching it today i you know anytime i don't live too far i'm just it's saying true. yeah yeah i can just we'll have a first contact over. Party. We have, a, have a a ladies who trek night you know like just absolutely you know why not why not I yeah i, I, have I a don't first know what the watch party. Crusher yeah, i don't know what the user base percentage of uh <laughs> is women but I, I'll dress up. I think I'll it's do. higher than most people anticipate yeah yeah, I, yeah yeah that's my suspicion is that there yeah. are more women playing stfc than oh really than people probably imagine what level am i i'm a your ops 28 I'm a strong i love that you tell her like where she's at yeah but you're at the you're at the top end of 28. Yeah. You, yeah, but you, I mean, and you just started uh, this year, last this six just, months. Yeah, yeah. you've been in the game about six months. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's super impressive. Okay. Because it took me two years to get to 35. So, Whoa. Uh, well, I have a lot of help. Yeah. That's true. I tell her when to look. I tell her when. But our mom is also playing. I should mention that. She'll send random texts like, where do I find Herogen? Yes. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how she's pronouncing uh, yeah, it. But did, 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 <laughs> so I, I, where do, where do, you know, it's just like a random text from mom. Where, where's the I Kardashian? I kind of really love this. Where's the Kardashian? Yeah, I, unfortunately, she leveled up to past 12 a little faster than I wanted her to, so oh, I couldn't pull couldn't her over pull her my over. server. So yeah. I have to... I don't know. So anyone who's on the server, well, I don't know what server she's I on. I think she's on 73. With our mom. Be nice to our mom. She's learning. she's learning. She's learning. Help her out. Yeah. I don't even know what she goes by anymore. I don't know where I was going to say, I don't know She's her changed thing. it a couple of times. Mine's so. Nummy Muffin. Yeah. <laughs> I can't share mine. Which, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, really? No, you can't share it. No, because I, 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 oh. uh, I don't want people to know where I'm at. Well, I'm oh, Scribbler. I'm Scribbler. Up or something. Okay. Uh, server 63, I'm Scribbler and... 
Don't blow me up. Second account somewhere. Well, you've you've put it out there. If it happens now, just you know, shield or share, right? Like, make sure you're like like send my ship like goodies that would be cool but to, not presently <laughs> bringing it back we need that where they're gonna be like here's a beaming over Gifting. some pizzas yeah but to get back to the first contact thing one of the things that i, I <laughs> besides the commercials luring me into the game we were uh, we'd finished on prodigy right literally weeks two weeks before the pandemic started and LA got locked down. Yeah. So it was perfect timing for me to find something to occupy myself. Yeah, sink your time. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, yeah, talk about sinking time. Uh, and so I found the game. And the, But the thing that kept me was the missions. I really enjoyed... Uh. The missions and it's one of my biggest complaints to people is i'm like you don't read the missions oh yeah <laughs> and i'm like she gets mad if i click through something too fast Did you read that they're I, universally loved because i i i enjoy that narrative aspect of the game yeah, yeah. I, do too. I think that you know there are some missions I have enjoyed far more than others but i in all i'm glad that they exist because it means it means that there's 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 care taken yeah. with yeah. Um, building those stories. Well, character yeah. voice is very strong there. Yeah. I, can, I can tell that whoever's I mean, writing is got the tone in. I definitely, yeah. I've, I've definitely had some envy of like, man, I want to write some missions. I'm just saying. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just throwing it. The out. writer is saying. Like, no, yeah. th- shout out to to our narrative team. Yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, Brian, um, I don't know if, if you've met Brian, but he did come out to Comic Con this past year. Oh, yes. cool. Okay, I think I did. Um, Maybe we'll meet him this year. Yeah, and uh, him and his team they do a fantastic job. We are actually going to do based off of just uh, community demand, actually, we're gonna sit down with one of the teams on Narrative, or one of the team members from Narrative mm. to talk through uh, kind of that process. Yeah. Ooh, that and, would be great. Yeah, I'd yeah. Love to so learn that. Um, that's actually coming uh, uh, next month. Mention so. pizzas and Prodigy, and yeah, yeah let's yeah, see yeah. what pizzas they can fit in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Disco should deliver pizzas. I'm just saying. Just go deliver. Get it you there. Get it to you on time. It would get there on time. Hot and ready. Hot and ready. (laughs) Hot and ready. Photo starts faster. From across the quadrant. Yeah. For sure. All right. I'm just saying that pizza could be delivery. a whole ar- that could be a whole arc. Pizza delivery in tra- <laughs> Well, I guess they they have replicators, so they. I'm just going to say pizza delivery. Pizza. Riker in Picard has this is oh, canon. Yeah. Riker, Riker makes the pizza pizzas in you know, his wood yeah. fired oven. I'm so just saying there is some appreciation for you know meals that are prepared. Yeah, by yeah. Because uh, Strange New Worlds Pike being the culinary oh, expert yes. that he is. Yeah, that's, I mean Neelix they still and his culinary oh Neelix. Creations. Yeah, so they, uh, they. I see a whole new game. I like that you say creations yeah they're uh, concoctions <laughs> they, that's the concoctions <laughs> no but uh but kind of like the tying all of that we i love that we just kind of went you know went hey places today this is, and just this talked. is like a writer's room now we can yeah. just go we'll just go make the show about this yeah just write my name yeah. in like really really tiny print just like <laughs> You know, Beck was there. Just, just don't have to put my name. Like, really, just Beck, oh, was, yeah. there. Beck, was, Beck there. was there. Beck was there. Beck was there. But no, I do want to say, like, just thank you, ladies. Like, oh just my God. Oh. for coming here. And obviously, and we can talk about Star Trek for a very long. Oh, time. and I, I have a feeling, like, when the, the camera stops rolling, like, we'll probably still, <laughs> we'll still be going. Um, but uh, no, like, thank you guys for taking uh, really your fun. time out to like talk through like your. You know your experiences with Trek. You're like you are obviously, um, you know, lovers of of the fandom or not the fandom, the IP and and, and the fandom. And the fan, yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of the fandom. We are the fan. We yeah. we 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 are yeah. the fandom. Yes. Uh, but no, like just coming out here. I mean, it's been. I don't know. We're we always kind of miss each other in general too so it's it's fun to like just say hey this is a scheduled thing like we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk oh, and I know. You guys have to yeah do a whole interview to see each other yes exactly okay. yeah the only I'll way we it. can see each other is if we H-C's. actually schedule it put a mic in front <laughs> and and i con you guys into being it's in really front of how i only uh, my friends this also have it. to do this yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No. you want to spend any <laughs> time wait list. With me. <laughs> No, no, but yeah, um, come over. We'll watch uh, first contact. Yeah, we can do like a watch party and and have sure. some fun. Don't blow but up my ship. I I am uh, on your server. I can, oh oh for them. They already uh, blow up my <laughs> ship. They already nobody's blowing up. And your then ship. they DM me or whatever you call it on there, and they're like, hey, I'm sorry, I blew up your ship. So then, see oh, what what do you care? Yeah. Hey, hey, by I'm the like, way, you're sitting on so much RSS. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> 
yeah we'll see S- about sisterly that. sisterly advice and mm-hmm. love no <laughs> yeah um but uh i know uh one thing that we're going to be grabbing from you uh we're going to be putting like all the resources down below in terms of how people can kind of sure. be keeping up with you but uh just real briefly like what are the best ways usually for people to kind of keep up with with the benson sisters see my venmo it oh no not that <laughs> um <laughs> Twitter? Is it still called Twitter? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. X. Twitter X. X Twitter. Whatever. I'm, what am I on there? You're Ju- the Julie Benson. The Julie Benson. <laughs> I don't even know the. my socials. Yeah. As in the. the Julie Benson, because some Julie Benson has just been squatting on that name for forever. Come on, Jules. And then um, Instagram, I'm Julie Benson. Uh, Twitch channel. Yeah, so I I finally started streaming on Twitch. Uh, we were doing it during the writer strike under our Benson Sisters account yeah. on Twitch, and then I started. I really wanted to do a lot of STFC and other gaming, yeah, um, and whatever else came to mind. And so, stay up way too late streaming it because I know I, I was there last night. I saw. I, I take the late <laughs> shift. I mean, I, you know, I, the, all the STFC you content providers oh, man. are all are early in the night, and so yeah. I take like a late shift. But uh, uh, that's um, Scribbler underscore SB. Yeah. Scribbler being my moniker on uh, Discord and in, in in game in some capacity. Oh. Yeah. And uh, and then yeah on Perfect. X uh, I am Shauna Benson and on on Instagram I'm Shauna M Benson. We also have a website called thebensonsisters.com. I actually didn't know up. that. Yeah. yeah. And okay. all of the links to those socials are there on the Benson Sisters, including I think an email for the Benson Sisters. So you know, send us all of your yeah. yeah there's a don't general, send us pitches. We can't hear them. We can't hear your pitches. Please don't. Uh, yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, you can you can contact us that way if you yeah. really want to or need to. Well, we'll put all the things down below. I'm going uh, to Costco next already. week. If anyone needs anything, <laughs> anybody needs anything, I can get you a bulk order. Email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you and about 20, 27 other people, I'll make yeah. sure to, to <laughs> grab something for you. Uh, but no, thank you guys so much. Uh, awesome. We'll put everything you, down. Bye below and this i mean in general has been a really fun this is one of the one of the few times that we've done like something that wasn't just just game we're celebrating like oh, like love and trek together stuff. so okay. this is exciting yeah and we're going to be doing more of things like this awesome. um so just for you guys um keeping up with those sorts of things make sure that you know you're subscribed to the channel I mean, you can like this video if you enjoyed having uh the vincent sisters with us because i know if i did liked it hit like and then if you hated it hit like yeah just yeah, to, just yeah, the, the dislike button doesn't work um but no i also want to hear from you guys like comment below like what were like pivotal moments for you guys with watching first contact Ooh, yeah. um is there something that we might have missed or maybe shared that was maybe even controversial in terms of like something that we universally like that maybe you didn't like or something like that please but. feel free to correct any and all mistakes or errors that we <laughs> made got all memory these. is only so good i'm yeah. ready to be trek explained no, yes. I like I I enjoy it. So, uh, but thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Live long and prosper, commanders.